Hey, my name is Tim Wilder. I'm a pastor here at First Baptist Church of and uh, Doyle's been a, a member, active member here for about 15 years. I met him about 15 years ago. I had some great conversations with him. And we come here today to honor his life. We want to honor his life. And everything, the scripture verses, we, we read all the songs. We got three songs. Um, he picked out every one of them. So he, he, these are things that he wanted done at his service as we come to honor him. But I want to start with a verse because the Bible says in Psalm 116, verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of God is the death of his servants, his saints. And this week we've had some saints go to be with Jesus. On Monday we had a, a service of honor. Juanita Epperson, and they were good friends. They sat right next to each other in church for many years, and, and she was 91, and, and she was a precious saint. She was the pastor's wife of this church for 19 years, and, and now Doral, same week, you know, a precious saint who gave his life to serve in Christ has left us. The precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints, and so I, I believe God doesn't see his children die. He sees his children come home, and, and he's come home. You know, the Bible refers to our body as being tents. And, you know, tents are wonderful for a season. Uh, they're wonderful for their intended purpose. Uh, but they can wear out. They can become worn. They can become torn. You know, poles collapse. And we need a more permanent structure than just a tent. We need a home. We need a house. And the Bible talks about that. 2 Corinthians 5.1. Now that we know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal home in heaven. Not built by human hands. And then Paul goes on to say in the same chapter, We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Doyle is away from his body. You know, his tent has worn out. But we have confidence and rejoice in what God says, that Doyle has an eternal home in heaven, and his, he's with Jesus. To be absent from the body for the believer in Jesus Christ, to be at home with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when somebody we love, like Doyle, passes away, man, our hearts are broken. There, there's, there's a relationship that's missed there. But beyond that, that human sorrow, I mean, we have a supernatural joy because we know he's not suffering no more. Uh, we know where he's at. And we know as believers in Jesus Christ that we will see him again. And so we come here to rejoice. And, and Doyle always found peace and comfort in difficult times from the word of God. And so I, I want to read one of his favorite chapters, uh, 23rd Psalm. And the 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Will you join me in prayer? Dear Father, we're just so grateful that we can gather here to honor a great saint, a great servant. Father, I thank you for the hope we have because of what your word tells us. That as believers in Jesus Christ, when we leave this place, man, we're, we're at home with you in heaven. And I, I pray for the family, that you give them a peace, knowing that you love Doyle, that you're taking care of him, that he's all right. And as we're walking through this valley of the shadow of death, that you're with them. And so I feel that the family, they feel your presence like they've not felt it in a long time. Knowing your word is true. And we thank you for Doyle's faithfulness his, and his legacy that he leaves behind. The, the thousands of lives have been touched by his ministry. And we come here to honor that. So Father, we thank you too for the hope he had and the hope we have because of your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that I pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God proves his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us.
Floyd Wellington. He was born on August 31st, 1928. He passed on August 1st, 2021. He was 92 years young. Survived by his wife, Joan. They spent, they spent the last five years together in marriage and had so much in common. So much in common. Both were in ministry. Both started churches. Uh, they had a lot of discussions. Theological, theological discussions. Church discussions. Uh, God brought them together. You know, in love and later in life. He survived by his daughter, Wanda. Two sons, Donald and Larry. Two grandsons, three granddaughters, seven great-grandchildren. He's predeceased by his first wife of 67 years, Harriet. Uh, you know, this, this came suddenly when I got the call uh, that he passed away. Uh, of course, the first question that always comes to my mind is, was, was he ready to go? It doesn't matter what degree you have, how much money you got, what your power, none of that stuff matters when you die. What, what matters is, are you ready to meet the one who made you? Are you ready to meet God? Are you right with God? And of course, I, I know Doyle, and, and I know him. He's been here 15 years. And many, he was definitely ready to go. That's why he wasn't afraid to die. He was not afraid to die. He was actually looking forward to all the things he's taught about heaven and re reuniting with believers who've gone on before him. But he was ready to go because many years ago, he realized there was a God who loved him, who wanted a relationship with him. And he realized what the Bible says, that he was a sinner. But God still loved him and wanted a relationship with him. And so he asked God to forgive him of his sins. And he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ as the leader of his life and the forgiver of his sins. And the Bible says because of that, you know, he was forgiven. He was spiritually born again. He was a child of God. And he had heaven as his, his eternal home. And he knew that. He, he believed that. He taught that for many, many years. The Bible says for the Christian, we're to serve him while we're here. But when we die as a believer, you know, we're going home. Not only that, but we gain some things. And so we sit here and we think, what did a what Joel gain by leaving? Think about it. He, he's gained freedom. He's free from the aches, the pains, the heartaches. He's free from all this mess with masks and no masks. He's free from all. He's, he's, free, you know, he's free from all that stuff. He's free. He's free from, you know, uh, all the, the troubles and suffering we're going through. But he also has gained some sweet fellowship. He's with men and women in the Bible that he's taught about, that he believed in. He's taught others about. He, he's with Harriet. He's with other believers who've gone on before him. He's, he's with Jesus Christ himself. We come here today to honor his life. And, and he, God's used him in such a mighty way. I, I just Some of the things I want to list here, um, you know, he received his Master's of Divinity from Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. And then he went and got his Doctorate of Ministry from New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. And some of the churches he served at, First Baptist Church of Odell, and he served at Gordon Avenue Baptist Church there in Georgia, Odell, Georgia, Grace Baptist Church in Valdosta, Georgia, Rolling Fork Baptist Church in Kentucky, another Baptist church is at Bouchelle uh, Park Baptist Church in Louisville, Midland Park <coughs> Baptist Church there in Kentucky, First Baptist Church in Venice, Florida, First Baptist Church in St. Cloud, Florida, First Baptist Church Homestead, Florida. Um, and then he, he, his, he culminated his ministry as the executive director of the Miami Baptist Association down in Miami. He served there for 10 years. And that meant he worked with hundreds of churches, some Baptist churches. He would help train and encourage pastors and all that. And then when he retired, he came here. And that's how I met him. Uh, there in Harmony. Out there in Harmony, he started a church called Harmony Community Church. See, he, he, he never got away from starting churches. That was his heartbeat, starting churches, telling people about Christ. And, and he wanted, when he, he, when he was kind of getting where he couldn't do it anymore, he said he came to see me and talked to our church about saying if we could help adopt that church and help him and what we're doing. And, of course, he, he joined our church 15 years ago. We, we started working with the Harmony Community Church. That's how I met him. And he's been very faithful, very active here. And I remember a couple of times going to visit him in his home. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm new. This town has changed cr like crazy in the last 36 years since I've been here. I've seen it just change completely. Dole understood that. He served in Miami. So he saw Miami change like crazy. So he knew exactly what I was dealing with here in Central Florida. And he would always encourage me. 
You know, because sometimes you get discouraged. So much change. Uh, sometimes people don't like the change. And so he said, hey, I love what you're doing. I love how you're trying to reach your community, all your community. You keep doing it. He tell me, I know some people don't like that, but you keep doing what you're doing. And so even as a young pastor here, you know, he was just encouraging me to keep doing what I'm doing. He's always been that way. Even Joan and him were in church before COVID hit, and just when I come by and see him, and they always sat next to Pastor Everson and Juanita right behind them. They were all of them. Great saints, godly saints, who are giving their lives to the ministry, who are always encouraging to me. And so I just want to say thank you for that. But, but he's just done so many things. Um, I want to read a tribute from his son, Larry. Dad's purpose in life was to live out his calling to ministry with this message. That the invisible God is made known to us through God's Son and through simple belief in Jesus. Our lives can be filled with God's love and peace, empowering us to live out of God's strength and not our own, inviting us to involve God in every aspect of our lives. And that's what he spent his life doing. From his pastoral side, he administered to churches, he visited the sick, he comforted the grieving and distress, he guided those who were wandering and lost, and he counseled many through the puzzling mazes of life. He was also pastor to the family through funerals and weddings and counsel. At home, he was dad and granddad, always the foundation of support and guidance. He lived his love. Yeah, he didn't just talk about his love, he lived it, he lived it. You know, just like God. God didn't just say he loved us. God demonstrated his love for us by sending his one and only son. And so this, well, all of us here have some great memories from Doyle. I want to see Joan. I want to see if Joan, Joan said she might want to have a few words. So. Hey, his words were often guiding They often were asking the few to be Again and again, they were part of the few. He was part of the few, and they were part of the few. He was part of the few again and again, and taught them how to be part and part of the few. It was his again and again part of his mission to be part and part of the field. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for his mission. Thank you, Lord, for his mission. Amen. And many people go that way. That's easy to go. But few, you know, few follow the narrow road of Jesus Christ. And very few make it. And so his, his heart was to share the gospel of Jesus Christ so that the few, you know, those who were serious, those who wanted to be forgiven, those who wanted a relationship with God, those who wanted to know heaven was their home, he'd share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and it was a few, and it's hard, but he was at it, and he was faithful, and he stayed with it. He stayed with it. And we, we thank God for the thousands of lives that have been touched by him planting the seeds of the gospel of Jesus Christ. One of his favorite songs of our church that we've sang, you know, since he's been here, is His Blood. 
And so we're going to play that now. This is one of his favorite songs in our church. My sins forgot. There is a grave. The truth.
Joan, you're going to have those moments where you want to talk to him and you realize he's not here. Your heart's going to hurt. But just remember where he's at. He's not hurting. He's not suffering anymore. He, he's healed. And as believers, we're seeing him again. But I want to encourage you in those moments. Jesus has come to me and talked to me. I'll give you the strength to carry on. I'll heal that hurt in your heart. You know, and I'll, I'll keep you doing what I've called you to do. So we honor his life and we're grateful for his legacy. Will you pray with me? Again, Father, we're just so thankful for Dora, brother, <clears throat> his life and his legacy and his ministry. And just his kindness. He's a kind man. A man appointed boys and girls, men and women, to Jesus Christ. He spent his life work doing your work. And your word tells us, you know, that you're going to, I know you greeted him and you said, well done, my good and faithful servant. He ran his race. He fought the fight, but he kept his faith. And now your word tells us you're rewarding him. And so, Father, we thank you for that. And my prayer is that we're, we're doing what Doral did. We're, we're pointing people to Christ. We're place our hands in the nail-scarred hands of Jesus Christ and follow him and tell other people about him until he calls us on home. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Life wasn't always easy for him. He lost his best friend of 67 years. And he 
he kept the faith. He, he was bitter towards God. He, he kept sharing the gospel, kept being kind of people. And the word of God is true. He's now being rewarded. He's being rewarded. And so, uh, and he's hearing, well done, good, faithful servant. And so, and then also think about who he's with. That just, that changes everything. When you have your sad days, and you will, think about who he's with. Father, we just thank you again for his life and his ministry and his legacy. And I pray, too, again for the family that you give them the peace, knowing that you got him. He's okay. You're taken care of him. And as believers, we know it's not over. It's just beginning. We're we'll seeing again. And we thank you, too, for his ministry and the lives that have been changed for eternity because of his faithfulness to serving you with his entire life. And so you have him. You got him. Take care of him. Thank you for letting us honor his life today. It's in Jesus' name, I believe. God bless y'all, and, and you're invited too back. We're going to back to the church for lunch, and I'll wait till you can sit around and share stories about him and talk about him. I, uh, he'd love that.